Texas, and in honor of opening day, can you please make a season prediction with the team's record? Who will be the team MVP? Who will be the best player? Do you have a breakout player in mind? Yeah, you always have breakout players in mind. Um, I will uh, go ahead and say that the Cubs are going to get better this year. I like some of the subtle changes, some of the younger guys. I think the Cubs will win 87 games. So I'm going with 87, which will be enough to uh, to win the uh, division. Uh, I think the Brewers won it last year with 92 wins, and I think that uh, I think the Cubs are going to do well. I expect Justin Steele to have a really big season. I think he's going to step up. He's he's done it already, and all he's got to do is uh, rinse and repeat. So I think he's going to be their best pitcher. Um, I you know I don't want to. I'm kind of hesitant on their best player. I guess I have to go with Cody Bellinger because he's a free agent again. He's on a prove it deal and he's got something to prove. So I think he's going to have a very similar season to the one that he had. Um, and, and maybe that's stepping out a little bit. Um, but I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I, I want to say, I want to say as far as a breakout is concerned that it's going to be someone that's not on the roster right now. Mm, interesting. I, I want to say that it's going to be someone that brought or, up. a rookie? Uh, I think a rookie. Okay. And I think it could be a pitcher. Like that. But I am not sure which of, like, three guys it is. Okay. But for the purposes of this, I'll say it's uh, Ben Brown. All right. I'm right there with you, Molly. I, I got it right here. 87 and 75. So four games better. 87 yep. wins overall. So that should push them right into the playoffs. They should be able to take care of that division. We'll get into that later. Um, I also have the MVP. I'm going to go with Cody Bellinger just because I feel like he should be their MVP. He's in a prove-it year. And if he can play and kind of pretty much do the same thing that he did last year, then that should help them. Their best player, I want it to be Justin Steele. I've been big on saying... I don't see Justin still as an ace overall. I you see him as a, you call him a fifth starter. I did not say that. Oh, I did not I say that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't him. But but I do see him as a he could be and he could prove me wrong. And this is his way to do it. If he could repeat this season again, then yes, he's definitely an ace. So he could be most likely should be their best player. Breakout I got is Michael Bush. Nice. Like if he takes it to another level and really reach that potential then look, the, the Cubs can be doing some nice, these young prove it players, if they can do something, then that can kind of push them right into kind of claiming that division. They're so high on their young pitchers and on their minor league system that they kept him away from going after a guy like Jordan Montgomery, which could have been a short term uh, way to address the Jamison Tyone injury or just loading up on veteran pitchers, but they like their, their depth. So I see why. They also should like their major league team. I have the Cubs winning 88 games. That'll win the division. It's not the toughest division in baseball or the National League. The NL West is loaded. But the Cubs can win the division by winning 88 games, and I think they're capable of doing that. Their team MVP uh, will be Dansby Swanson. Bellinger will have another good year, but Dansby Swanson's the guy. Defensively, and he'll hit better than he did last year. He started a little bit slow, but he finished uh, like he was maybe tired. I think he'll understand better how to pace himself, even though he's a guy that plays regularly anyway, and he had did in Atlanta. But I think Chicago's a little bit different, so he will be better this year, and he'll be the MVP. Best player could be the same guy, but I think that when you look at um, somebody like Justin Steele being able to you know, be this ace again, but Adbert Alzali is somebody nobody talks about, but if you're in a lot of close games, he's going to be one of their better players and maybe more, more valuable. Is it the same thing? Dust is not here to correct us. Mm-hmm. Breakout player. I did have Michael Bush like Brandon did, but I, since he chose him, I'll say Jordan Wicks. He's their third starter right now at a necessity. Yeah. He eventually will ascend to be a guy that you trust in that rotation. Jordan Wicks is going to have a very good year. I'll take your questions. I don't have have much to say about this. All right, let's move to the south side. While we're sticking with opening day, I need the White Sox season prediction for the team's record, who will be the team MVP, their best pitcher, 
And once again, do you have a breakout player in mind? <laughs> well, I think I have to stay consistent. And I know Ron from the South Side is writing down my predictions. So I was a little over my skis on Saturday morning, and I said 68 victories. So I'm going to say 68 victories for the White Sox. They're going to be improved. Wow. That's that that means they're going to lose a lot, but they're going to be seven games better than they were a year ago. It's 94 losses is better than 101. Still not a great team, but I, I do think they'll be winning uh, cleaner or losing cleaner and winning more often. So I have 68 victories. The team MVPs, a gimme. That's Luis Robert Jr., mm -hmm. the best pitcher. Uh, I think Michael Soroka, if he can stay healthy, is going to be the most consistent starting pitcher. And that's the big if in his career. But I like everything that he brings to Chicago in that trade with the Braves. The breakout player, boy, I would love it to be Colson Montgomery. I hope that he comes up midseason and is the guy. So I'm going to stay with the optimistic tone today and say Colson Montgomery will be the breakout player for the White Sox. All right. this You guys make fun of me a lot because I always talk about Pedro being bottom three manager <laughs> overall. So You're, I looked at the <laughs> I looked at the odds. The White Sox right now have the tie for the third worst odds to win the MVP. So technically bottom three. They're in that category. With that being said, the wins, they're projected around like 62. I got them a little higher than that. I got 65 wins for them right now. Maybe they'll be three games better. I, I, I got 65. So that makes them, they don't have that 100 yes. loss. So that helps them out there. I mean, breakout player, I mean, just, you, David, you said it, 14 new guys, like, pick any one of them. Like, I mean, <laughs> anybody could be a breakout, somebody you don't know right now. Um, The best player should be on their team should be Luis, Luis Robert. Their best pitcher, I think, is going to be Michael Kopech. And the only reason I'm saying that is just because maybe you can get some value for him and then later trade him down the line because you just right now this season look like it's all about – just developing and getting prospects. The MVP for this team is going to be Ozzie Ginn. And the reason why I got Ozzie Ginn, because it's going to be a long, <laughs> long season. Is he taking over? And, and <laughs> Ozzie Ginn is going to be the MVP because we're going to be tuned in to those post games when it comes to these White Sox games. Um, I, I think, Brandon, either you're looking at my sheet or I'm looking at yours because I have 65 written down here. That's unbelievable. We have the same number on both sides of town. 65 and 88? No, 87. Uh, 87. 87, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Interesting. It's just weird that we both went that route. I guess it's not that strange because that's not a very good number. It's kind of a middle number. And I think we know they're not going to be great. And they're going to be just a tiny bit better. They're not going to lose 100 games. That That is kind of my reasoning. Uh, my MVP is Luis Robert Jr., and I'm going to say that not only does he make an all-star game, but he is the starting center fielder in the all-star game. Luis Robert, better, better, I'm sorry, greater than sign Mike Trout. Wow. Now that He's gonna have is that a kind sign. Of year. He's going to be fantastic. This is opening day. Yeah. I'm going with Luis Robert. Lifeguard. Have a Lifeguard. Breakout. Molly just went over to skis. Uh, uh, their best pitcher, and this is another one that's insane. I'm going with their 18th prospect, Jordan Leisure. Ooh, Guy's been really good that's coming a good up. Call. They're going to need help in the back end. They're going to need a high leverage guy. Why not? Let's give him a shot and let's see if he can get it done. And he's just he's just young enough not to realize. You know how wretched the season is. He's going to be excited, and he's going to he's going to have a good moment for himself. He suits the socks. He does. He's got a leisure suit. Um, and for breakout player, in honor of uh, the Athletics, Jim Bowden, and in honor of you, David, I'm going with Eloy Jimenez. So I'm going <laughs> with one man. Oh, great! To finally put it together. Thank you. And I don't know if they trade him by the deadline. I don't know what happens, but I think Aloy <sighs> is going to be the player you always dreamed he would be. Thank you, Jimbo. The burden is off. He is now your guy, Kevin from Palatine. Molly said that. I didn't say me. MVP. All right. I Break said out. breakout player <laughs> for the White Sox. I like and those, I'm I following like the lead of Jimbo. I like those picks. That's a big question. 